You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com You're listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up, are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long. Welcome to another episode of Earth Oddity. My name is Tiny. With me, as always, is my co-host, John Long. Hello. We thank you so much for joining us, whether you are waking up in a dumpster and you can't find your prosthetic leg, or whether you are using said prosthetic leg to beat your lover senseless, mercilessly. Yes. We thank you for joining us. Yeah, glad you're here. We're actually recording during a possible tornado. So <laughs> Extremely, extremely early episode yes. this week because Sunday is Easter. Yeah, Sunday is Easter. That's a very important day for us. Right. And yes. we wanted to spend that day with our families, so right. we uh, decided to brave the elements mm-hmm. and yeah. just, you know, give Mother Nature the finger and come dodged, in here and you record a podcast. Some down power lines. I did. Here. I literally had to turn around and go back the other way. That's right. And go Martin Road. Oh yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows who that is. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to church and the church has power, but nobody else does. Right. And the internet's out. So yes. We're currently using two bars on a 3G network. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just to bring you a podcast. But you're worth it. Yeah, we care. And we have no life. So we decided (laughs) what better thing to do during a tornado than abandon our families (laughs) and come. Well, I I made sure I got my family to the in laws. They have Uh, a basement. So they'll be safe. See y'all. I told Deidre (laughs) before I left, I was like, if I die in a tornado, use my life insurance money to buy a bigger house. (laughs) You know, because we keep making offers on houses and people, um, they're too expensive for us. So. Um, I still don't have anywhere to live. So if you're out there, <laughs> you want me to crash at your place, my family, uh, there's six of us. Uh, we'll be glad to do that. Like or, I said, we'll take Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> or, uh, you know, if, if you're the praying type, maybe just throw up a prayer that yeah. says like, Hey, let's let John find the house that he needs. It's going to have enough room for him and everyone. He's, trying to help a young girl have a better life and <laughs> he just needs a better place to live with more room so uh if not mom we'll be crashing with you until we find somewhere else to stay mom and dad and that'll be great just eight people in one house or just be like the <laughs> olden days like the waltons yeah like the waltons um but let's start off with a story and it's from Florida, but it is not a Florida man story. It's okay. a Florida woman story. Okay. Um, Florida woman wax half naked attacker with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic pause there. <laughs> he, we call that a pregnant pause in the business. Uh, he better be glad I didn't have a gun, she said. A baseball bat-wielding Florida woman slugged a man after he attempted to break into her parked vehicle and then charged at her on Sunday. Clarice Ganey, who's 65. Oh, man. Yeah, of Gainesville, told WGFL she heard a noise coming from outside her home and peeked out her window. That was when she said she saw a large man dressed only in his boxers attempting to get in her car. Hmm. I grabbed my bat. I braced myself, and I eased the door open, Ganey said. At she's, that moment. <laughs> she's sneaking up on oh, him. Oh, yeah. She was out for vengeance. <laughs> At that moment, identified by police, uh, the man who was identified by police as 37-year-old Antonio Mosley, no relation to uh, C.J. Mosley, former <laughs> Alabama great, charged at her, authorities said, uh, according to WGFL, and she says, I took that bat and hit him upside the head, like paya, <laughs> that's, exact, paya! that's exactly what he said. <laughs> and he said, "Ow," Ganey recalled. <laughs> the man reportedly fled to a nearby mobile home park, but left a sock, shirt, and pants. 
He was in oh his Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Here's another quote from her. He was in his drawers. Do you recall? <laughs> I don't normally break into cars, but when I do. Oh, I get down to my boxers. <laughs> yeah, do it in my boxers. A K9 unit was able to track Mosley to a mobile home uh, where officials said he he was found with a pair of pants on. So he's able to pick up a pair of pants somewhere <laughs> along the way. Um, WGFL reported cocaine was found in his pocket. And he brought, uh, and he was brought to Ganey for identification. Now, is that the pocket of the the shorts he left behind? No, I think or the, the pants pocket he had and the on. pants he had on. Because yeah. if they're the ones he had on, he could say, "Well, these aren't my pants. It matter. These are pants I stole." <laughs> Let me just say, I've been through this before. If it's on your person, it doesn't matter if it's not yours or not. You're right. responsible for it. Uh, so she identified him, and he was charged with attempted burglary to both an occupied and an occupied unoccupied conveyance and possession of a controlled substance. Ganey had a warning for the suspect, saying he better be glad I didn't have a gun because I would have shot him. I believe she would have. Then, pointing at her baseball bat, she added, but this is my gun right here because I would have gun pow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would have gone payow. So uh, Clarissa here sounds like a riot. If she's a hoot. <laughs> the picture that goes along with the article, you should check it out in the show notes, is just amazing. Yes, did she, I mean, okay. They've As got somebody's a meme all, you know. <laughs> they've got, if, if they didn't use um, Getty Images or yeah, something. Yeah, like a stock photo. If they, if they didn't do that, then she posed for this photo. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it's not like the photographer was there snapping pictures while it was happening. No, no but yeah, she definitely posed for it. <laughs> And that's a woman that would would pose for a picture. Yes. She's like reared back like Ted Williams or She's reared back like Paya. That's right. She's ready to get this dude. <laughs> but my thing is uh, you know, why are you in your underwear robbing cars? I don't know, but I wish more burglars would strip down and leave their clothes behind. Yeah, right. Make so it dogs, easier to catch them. Yeah, so the dogs can get their scent and everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, come on, dude, uh, keep your pants on here. I know you're, you know, doing coke or whatever, and probably not yeah. thinking great, but there's no reason to do to take your pants off when you're going robbing. Let's yeah, be cr- decent about <laughs> crime this. Crime is your job. Yeah. you know, let's be professional. Let's about be this. professional about this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, but I tell Did, you what, uh, George Clooney. Did he rob a casino in his boxers? <laughs> I don't well, know. that sounds like a great movie. That does sound like a great movie. <laughs> it does. I bet you some ladies would tune in for that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Trademark. But, trade, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Clooney, George, give us a call. Let's work this out. Let's workshop this. All right. We'll get it on a storyboard. We'll see what happens. But yeah, this, uh, you know, old people, we, we love old people. I love old people. I do too. They're great. But they don't care about dying. No. You know, I mean, like, once you reach, and I'm getting closer and closer every, <laughs> every day. day. Yeah. I almost just hit somebody with my car, like, hit another car on my car today just to prove a point. Because I was like, I don't care if I die, you know. <laughs> I'm getting there. But I stopped myself because I remember I have family that depends on me. Four kids. Yeah. But uh, then I also make decisions like coming out during a tornado warning to <laughs> record a podcast. But yeah, old people don't care. They'll just. I'm a Calvinist. Safety schmafety. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a little doctrinal humor for you, all you people That's out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all you reformed people. But uh, yeah, the old people don't care. They'll just roll up on you, you know, oh, yeah. fight you. And Absolutely. Take a baseball bat out because you didn't know if that dude was armed or anything. I guess he's well, in his underwear. I say probably not. Yeah, I don't know. They had a twenty two stuck in the waistband or something. Well, maybe, maybe. Was, if, if if he did, those were some. That was some stout. Yeah, elastic in that waistband. <laughs> Definitely not uh, regular boxers. He's a boxer brief guy. I bet if you <laughs> yeah. if you're sticking a pistol in the waistband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well. Our next story here, and this was a huge story. Did you see where the the Notre Dame burned down? No, I, I didn't even hear <laughs> You didn't see that? No, no not at all. <laughs> yeah, I caught it just barely. You're talking about the football the, program? Yes. They did? It did. Wow. Brian, entire, Kelly, Brian Kelly got really mad. <laughs> their entire football program burned down to the ground. <laughs> During a bowl game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's usually when it happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Is it too soon for jokes about this i don't know well it's not too soon for jokes about uh notre dame getting Football. owned yeah right in the 2013 12 2000 you call yourself a bama fan <laughs> well now it, i thought 12 was lsu for some reason no that was 2009 
No. No, 2009 was Texas. 2011 was LSU. And 2012 was Notre Dame. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. You got a call? No, that's a text. When y'all are finished, I think the storms are over. No, they're not. They're coming back at 8 o'clock. Oh. Well, it's eight oh two. Oh, well then they they should be here in a little bit. All right. If this if you know if we happen to die while we're recording this, I, I you know it could be valuable or something. It could you know, be. Like what if we're like you know an artist who dies and all? Their well, work you know, it's really. I was thinking just the other day. I was like, you know, um, I was thinking about my dad. He's now nah, he's not on death's door, but he yeah. is getting old. Sure, he's struggling with Parkinson's. I don't. You know, I was just thinking. Well, it would be nice to sit down with him and turn on this audio recorder and interview should. him and, and hold on to that. Yeah. And I, I, I'm going to do that, absolutely. But I, then I thought, I was like, well, you know what? When I get old, I'm going to leave a treasure trove of oh, hilarious yeah. podcasts right. for my children and their children right. to go back to. Well, by the time we get old <laughs> and we're ready to die, <laughs> yeah. like everyone will already know our Google search history by then. <laughs> and so... There'll be no like, yeah. You know, my my grandfather, my mom's father, Thomas Lawrence, was a great man by all accounts. Everyone considers him a great man who knew him when he lived. Um, well, after he passed away, some years later, we found like some police magazines of his that had like pinup pictures in them, you know. Okay, and it was shocking to me, you know, because <laughs> you're like, oh wow, you know. I thought uh, he didn't. Papa liked a pretty lady, you know, <laughs> and uh, just like any other dude, you know, yeah. uh, they weren't like indecent or anything like that. And so uh, I imagine that one day my kids will have a realization about that and be like, <laughs> oh, wow, dad's really into feet for some reason or <laughs> you know, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, that will be, that'll be just, well, that'll be what happens to us. Oh, dang. Anyways, so yes, uh. Notre Dame Cathedral. <laughs> Notre Dame Cathedral. Yes. 800-year-old building. 800 years old. Uh, burned down. Wow. Quasimodo is without a home. Oh, he's homeless. That's <laughs> yes. tough. As he's had a rough life. <laughs> he really has. But anyway, uh, and I don't know why we're joking about this. It's I mean, not, <laughs> not funny at all. To me. <laughs> but, I mean, there was no there was no fatalities or anything. Okay, was there? It's good. just the building, Just right? the building, yeah. They, I heard they saved all the artwork and everything out of it, most of it. Yeah, and the gold, it, the fire wasn't hot enough to melt down the gold. Yeah, that's all so that that's too. important. That's good, yes. <laughs> Somebody doesn't know basic you know, chemistry, but whatever. But our next article comes from the Huffington Puffington Post, all and right. it says here, People claim to see Jesus in the flames engulfing Notre Dame Cathedral. Okay. Because, you know, well, typically, well, I, I'm glad to see Jesus because typically you see the devil yeah, in natural ancestors. We, we know how Jesus is associated with hot flames. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anyway, the whole world witnessed the massive fire that destroyed Paris, Notre Dame Cathedral. There, I said it again. The whole world witnessed the massive fire that destroyed Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral on Monday, but some people claim they saw something even more amazing, an image of Jesus. Okay. Quote, when I looked at this photo last night, I was really astounded by what I saw. 38-year-old Leslie Rowan told Scotland's Daily Record, when I look at it, I see a silhouette of Jesus. I really see a vivid image. Rowans said that she believed the image was a positive one, which <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm glad that you interpret I mean, it that way. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, Catholic Church had a little bit of <laughs> had a bumpy road the past few years. So they have. If Jesus shows up in your fire, a uh, hundred year old cathedral, I don't know. That's positive. I'm just saying. I don't want to say anything too derogatory about Catholicism in Me general. No, no. But I love as them. as you said, I, I mean, you know, God fearing, Jesus loving c- Catholics, I think would agree with us right. that the the church does have a problem. Yeah, and we all look to the Pope to sure. straighten this out. It's your job, buddy. Right. You know, we're counting yeah. on you. Well, you know, he's fixing the climate right now. He's going to get to that <laughs> in a little bit. I can't, I mean, look to all my Catholic friends. I am just being just like my normal mean self. Y'all know I don't mean any of that. Okay, all right. I don't mean any of that at all. I, I think the Pope and me would probably get along pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I was going to try to work a not today Satan joke in there somewhere, but. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I, look, I just want to say again on the record: for I, if there's any Catholic mailmen out there, please leave me alone. <laughs> All right? yeah. I, I have nothing against Catholic Church. I'm just making jokes. Okay. Well, anyway, 
She says, I feel like it will bring comfort to people in Paris and all over the world at this sad time. Okay. So it was, it's comforting to know that the church burnt, burnt down, but Jesus burned it down. Yeah, right. so. Jesus was there in the flames. <laughs> it'd been cool if it was Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. That would have been really yes. cool, you know. It if been. they were like, "Oh, and there's a fourth man walking around in there," <laughs> and who, he who, looks who could like, that be? and he looks like a son of man. That's right. Yeah, who could that be? <laughs> that would have been really awesome. It says that others who've seen the photos of the cathedral are also convinced they see a divine image in the flames. Now, I was showing you this picture earlier. Yes. I and, did not see it. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, am I not chosen? I'm, Is that it, <laughs> Mr. Calvinist? Am I not elected? I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I mean, I. you really have to squint your eyes and turn your head to see yeah. the silhouette. Once the circle was around it, I could see it a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And So, I mean, I'm glad that this is bringing comfort to people. Sure. And you know what? I bet, you know, Jesus is omnipresent, right? He's, Absolutely. He's, he's, he was we're, there. We're two are gathered. I will be <laughs> yeah, there. Exactly. You know, so, so, yes, Jesus was there. But uh, I think this is a textbook example of pareidolia here. This is yeah. people looking for patterns where right. there may not be. Yeah, it's question like mark. They would play heavy metal records backwards in the 80s and be yes. like, it's saying Hell Satan. And yeah. you'd be like, oh, now I hear it. Now uh-huh. that you've told me what it's saying. Yeah, same deal. But uh, anyway, you know, I'll tell you what. There will be a link in the show notes. You yeah, can check go, it out for yourself. Check it out for yourself. And then you tell us what you think. Right. So, And once again, I was just joking, everybody, all right? <laughs> yes. No anybody mad at me. Just making <laughs> jokes here. I'm a dumb redneck from Alabama, so that's all I know how to do. It's my and, only talent. And and no joke, I mean, if you kind of turn the picture this way, I mean, it looks to me kind of like it's Buddha sitting, <laughs> okay. sitting crisscross applesauce. Right. So. I hate for you to tell that to that lady in Paris. You know, hurt her feelings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe uh, she had had a few glasses of wine. We know our Parisians like to drink. You know, yeah. they'll, they'll kick back a bottle or two on us, um, like this teacher in Kentucky did. For, and let me just say, shout out to Todd who sent me all of the stories I have this week. He's like my number one resource. <laughs> Very good at it, uh, and a good friend and a great listener too. So this comes out of Kentucky, and it's the headline reads, A woman was arrested for teaching while drunk at a Kentucky middle school. Uh Uh-oh. Which, having been around middle schoolers, because I have a middle schooler and all his friends, I kind of (laughs) understand. I would also like to give kudos to this lady, before we get into the article, for not trying to sleep with the students, okay? Because... (laughs) Been a big rash of that going around here lately, all right? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, every day there's a story about it, you know? And I know we've always had the creepy old man scenario, and that's definitely been there, but uh, but the ladies are making up some ground in that, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Anyways, so this comes from Georgetown, Kentucky. A woman is behind bars after deputies say she was teaching while drunk at a Scott County Middle School in Kentucky. Uh, an arrest citation said Brooke Ellen West. Shout out to my buddy Paul. This is probably some of your kin <laughs> folks, man. I listen to Paul's radio show, Jasmine Blue, by the way. It comes on uh, WDVX in, out of Knoxville, Tennessee. You can get it off of their website. It's a great show, especially if you like older music and mm-hmm. uh, you know old phonograph records and everything. It's great. She was arrested Monday after she admitted to authorities that she took four vodka shots around 11 a.m., a student at Royal Springs Middle School said West was yelling and cursing at students. The teacher was behind the desk and looked up at one of the girls and told her to shut up, <laughs> said, said Misty Allen, a mother of a student. Allen said her child said West cussed at the students, then fell asleep after laying her head on the desk. Those must have been some big shots. <laughs> you know? Well, it was some of that Kentucky bourbon. <laughs> well, yeah, it says vodka, but yeah. Oh, never mind. And literally, I mean, uh, really, Miss West, why don't you just put it in like a, a Yeti tumbler like all the other <laughs> teachers do? You know? Don't just bust out the shot glass in the bottle. That's a total substitute move. Um, West, who is a substitute teacher, smelled like alcohol and was unsteady on her feet, and she had a .317 blood alcohol content. Dead gum. Lord. She got started early. That, like Those were some big shots. <laughs> uh, the students in the classroom were ages 11 to 13. West is charged with alco- alcohol intoxication in a public place and endangering the welfare of a minor, and she was placed in the Scott County Detention Center. 
Um, so there's a press release from the uh, school board, but I'm not going to read it because it's your standard school board stuff, and they care about it's, the safety of the yeah, students. Yeah, it's what you'd expect. I mean, there ain't nothing you can do if you got a drunk teacher. Right. It's, there's no damage control for that. But, yeah, um, having been around some 11- to 13-year-olds every day, really, that'll make you want to kick back a few drinks <laughs> I and mean, just drive you up the wall. And especially, you know, we all know how it is when you get a substitute teacher. You turn it up a notch. Why Why is that? Because the regular teacher, I feel like, is, has a little more authority. Right. You know, you've, as a student, you think that, you know. And the substitute teacher is just there babysitting for mm-hmm. a day because, you know, the regular teacher is hung over and couldn't come in. And uh, so you just, you know, it's going to be like a worksheet day and you're just going to goof off all day long. But you know how I remember when I was in school, every time we had a substitute teacher, I mean, sometimes you'd come in and the teacher would just be there. Yeah. But sometimes the, the teacher would tell us, OK, oh, yeah. well, now for the next two days, you're going right. to have Miss So-and-so and I expect you to give her all the respect right. you would give me. And she's going to be taking names. Yeah. And if you don't, I'm going to know and you're going to get in trouble. That never happened. Yeah, who cares? Do, She's like, look, man. Did the, sub, did the substitute teacher never tell her? Or yeah. was she just, you know, pulling her leg when I'm she sure, told us that she was going to I'm sure there us. wasn't probably a lot of communication, you know. <laughs> right. Like, you know, you don't want to talk about your job when you're not there. You're not going to call the substitute teacher off hours and be like, how was everybody today? Was, and if you're was the little substitute tiny teacher, behave like he was supposed to, <laughs> you know? And if you're the substitute teacher, then you probably don't want to be like, yeah, I didn't do my job very well. Right. I couldn't control I couldn't the kids. Be, it's like when people go, you go and pick your kids up from nursery at church. And you're like, how are they today? Oh, he's a little angel. But you know the nursery <laughs> worker in their head is like, I hate this kid right yes. now. He was you throwing know, blocks at everybody. You know they're lying. You yeah, just, you right. Want to say you're lying in church yeah. right now to right. my face, and that's what I would tell people. I'm like, look now, if he if they've acted up, let me know. You got to be honest with me because I'm not be able to correct it if all yeah. you're doing is telling me they're fine. They're like, oh no, he's a little angel. He's, like, he's just going to get worse. Y'all used to keep Thomas when he was little, so you know. I mean, you know how it is. So yeah. Well, now I will say, and I, God is my witness. Thomas was a, a very well behaved. So I put child. the fear of God in him. Hudson, not so much. No, Hudson's, <laughs> Hudson's a, he's a loose cannon. You know, he's a loose cannon. Yes. He's not like a horrible kid or anything. No, but he's he know. doesn't. He is like me. He doesn't respect authority, and he has a healthy respect for authority. But he also has a healthy. Uh, I can be my own boss, and yes. I don't need anybody else to tell me what to do. And in him, you know. So, yeah, yeah, he he'll try your patience. He'll yes. make you bust out a vodka bottle every once in a while. <laughs> Just saying. That, be up that's up not there. true for any of my Baptist friends that are listening. <laughs> All right? Okay, before I get kicked out of church. I was going to say, he'll be in there uh, correcting the preacher during pastor's <laughs> He will sometimes. Yes. I'll tell you, the kid, is just, he's amazing. <laughs> he's made being a parent fun, I'll say that. <laughs> it had definitely been a good experience. Uh, okay, well... You know, uh, sometimes those uh, shots of vodka can lead to other kinds of shots. Yes. We're, I think we're doing good with our transitions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're getting better. Oh, yeah. Uh, prison sentence for a man who shot at fireflies that he thought were, quote, alien lasers. Okay. All right. Says that the, a man from Clinton County who fired shots at what he thought were alien lasers is headed to prison. Troopers say that Jesse Shields of Mill Hall was high on bath salts last mm, June when he fired you. a handgun into the sky near Mill Hall. Fearing they were being chased, Shields and a woman, Catherine McCloskey, ran to a nearby home where the homeowner got the gun from them and called 911. Shields then allegedly asked the homeowner if he could take a shower to get the goo off of him that was burning his skin. Sure. Standard. <laughs> Shields was sentenced to on Monday. Shields was sentenced on Monday to three to six years in prison after pleading guilty last month to criminal trespass and firearms without a license. Mm. McCloskey McCloskey ple- pleaded. McCloskey. P- <laughs> Come on, keep it. Let's go one more time. Let's go. They're a uh, fifth times a charm. <laughs> McCloskey pleaded guilty in November to DUI operating a vehicle while under the influence of a controlled substance and disorderly conduct. She was sentenced to six days to six months in jail. Oh. Now, these alien lasers. Yes. Do you know what they were? No. They were fireflies. Okay. (laughs) Lightning bugs. Yes. From the south. Lightning bugs. Okay. Well, I mean, I could see getting confused if you're on bath salts and that, that, but you might have that idea. 
Can I ask you a question? I feel mm-hmm. like bath salts is a term that just kind of gets used kind of loosely right. and thrown around in yeah. the media. Is that a specific substance? I don't, I don't, I have no bath salt experience. <laughs> I know everyone who's listening is shocked yes. at this. We're all like, yeah, those our, came attention is, our attention is on John because he's right. got the answer. Those came around after my time. <laughs> I do know that it's not the stuff like your wife puts in the bath. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That won't do anything but make you sick. From experience, all right. <laughs> this is trying it out. Heard about it on the news. It's like, hey, my wife's got some cucumber melon bath sauce in here. It smells let's, lovely. Yeah, let's see what happens if we chase a dragon a little while with it. Okay, but I I don't really know what all it is. I think it's like a a mixture of a bunch of different chemicals or whatever and synthetic stuff. And I, but I know it'll make you go crazy from what they say. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll sounds mess like you a up fun really time. Although I tell you what, you want to hear something really horrifying. What's that? The Miami zombie, the oh, dude yeah. that uh, ate the homeless guy's face right, off. Yeah. Every time that gets brought up, what do you hear? Bath salts. Yeah. The guy was on bath salts. Right. No one ever mentions his toxicology came back several weeks later, and he tested positive for THC, nothing else. Uh, okay. All right. So well, we honestly, as far as science is concerned, we have no idea why this guy ate this dude's face <laughs> off. I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, maybe just because he is a weirdo. <laughs> maybe. But yeah, I, I really don't know what's all in bath salts. Maybe one of our listeners can tell us and, and write in and let us know. But I just know it'll make you go crazy. And it sounds like a wild time, you know. I'd like to just try it, like chain myself up into a seat or something like, so I can't hurt myself. Like when uh, Odysseus was sailing past the sirens. Yeah, the sirens, yes. <laughs> Have like somebody, like you could be there just to help me out in yeah. case something goes on. I'd just chain me to a pole somewhere and let me, let me try a little bath salts for a few hours and see what happens, you know? I'd probably die. You know, my brain and body can't take that. You'd be trying to eat my face off. Yeah, but you, I would be like a dog, you know, that's chained up. You just get like one step behind, you know, where I can go, one step farther than I can go. And I just run at you and it like yanks me back. That'd be pretty wild. That'd be some good content. You know, yeah, we could do like a whole recording of it. I don't know. That's, that seems like that would probably get me kicked out of church, too. Probably. And divorced. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm disowned by my family. Maybe even some community service. Oh, yeah. There'd probably be a little community service. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I could see the law getting called at some point in time. I, like, I cannot handle him anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, I have no transition segue for this story. I'm just going to read the headline. Woman beats man with his prosthetic leg while when he wants to break up. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, love hurts. Okay. We, we learned that from the rock band <laughs> Nazareth. Love hurts. Okay. Uh, this comes from New Orleans. Uh, a Marario woman used her ex boyfriend's prosthetic leg to beat him up after a night of drinking and a breakup, authorities said. Michelle Jackson, who was 58, was arrested on Wednesday and booked with aggravated battery, according to the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. Captain Jason Rivarde said the two began drinking on February 11th, when at some point the victim told Jackson he wanted to date someone else. Now, Uh-oh. this story's from April 10th, so it's just now getting out. Right. The man later went to sleep, but woke up early the next morning with a large cut on his head and was dripping with blood, Oh damn. and his hand was also injured. Jackson told a relative that she took the victim's prosthetic leg and beat him with it. (laughs) Jackson also admitted to stabbing the man, although he did not have any stab wounds. Okay. All right. That's good. Must have missed. You know? (laughs) Jackson left before the deputies arrived, and they said she called a relative and a friend because she thought she killed the man. Um, U.S. Marshals eventually tracked Jackson down Wednesday at her house and booked her into the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center, uh, and she's being held without bond. So, Man. She was not happy about getting no. broken up with, which breakups can be painful. I mean, <laughs> they're rough sometimes. <laughs> and uh, uh, It was especially painful for him. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for real. I bet you, I wonder if she gets out, if he's going to take her back. Yeah. I, Man, I would Probably not. No. But, you know, some dudes are just gluttons for punishment. That's true. We all got that friend that's dated a crazy woman for forever or married to a crazy woman and just won't leave or whatever, and she's just rough on him. Or vice versa. Happens yeah, with happens women all, and men, too. It happens all the time. Yeah, right. 
Um, but most of my friends are dudes, so that's, I know more about that. But right. yeah, it just won't leave for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, man, I just I think like, man, not only have you lost a leg somewhere along the line, <laughs> now you're getting beat with your fake leg. <laughs> that's a tough road to hoe right there. <laughs> that's that's a tough road to hoe. As, anyways, so. I have a philosophical question. If she hits him with his fake leg, did technically did she kick him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. That's a very good question. And this, you know, if it had been an arm, would it have been an armed armed assault? You know, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. How does all that work? Yeah, does, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> paraplegics, write in and, and yeah. tell us oh, your terminology. Number one, <laughs> number one, you know, paraplegic podcast in America. Shout out to Wiltz who put that up in the yeah. Facebook group. He had an excellent comment. He said he's not walking away from this relationship. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, Bravo, you know, I don't know, sir. and I don't know, you know. I have all my limbs. I'm all original parts, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Everything on me is original. You haven't had any work? No work done. <laughs> no work done at all. Well, I did have a minor surgery back when I was in fourth grade, but we're not going to get into that. Okay. My mom would be embarrassed. But uh, I uh, I just like, do you take your leg off when it's bedtime or whatever? Or did she like unstrap it from you? Like, I don't know the procedure. I don't know. I would think, you know, when you get ready for bed, you just leave the bad boy sitting there on a nightstand or whatever for the next well, morning. Well, yeah, but you don't want to, like, kick it and stump your toe on your own foot. Well, you, you put it on the nightstand. Yes, yes. You know, you pull and, it and off. It, maybe it was just handy. She just grabbed well, something yeah, that was Well, handy. of course, they had been drinking. Maybe or just footy. passed out, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, maybe just passed out or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, I wonder if it was one of those like high tech ones, you know, like you see people getting now one of those old that looks like a fake leg. You what know? if it was a blade? Ooh, I don't know. like Oscar Pistorius. Yes, right. Well, that's <laughs> problematic. He had a little trouble. Okay, <laughs> he was really fast though. He was fast. Yeah, called him Blade Runner. I, he didn't. That was over a breakup too. I think wasn't it? No, uh, the story. The story was he thought. Somebody she was, was breaking in. He thought somebody broke in and was, yeah. I guess, decided to use his restroom. Yeah, right. But that's a funny story. So. Yeah, there's a lot of fishy stuff. And about. way too much to get into here. Oh, yeah, I know. Just Instead, Google. we're going to talk about a real news story. Okay. <laughs> talk about something serious. <laughs> and we're going to keep with the, uh, the prosthetic leg theme. A man who fell asleep in a dumpster woke up in a garbage truck without his leg. Okay, so... All right. A Pennsylvania man fell asleep in a dumpster, then awoke in a garbage truck to find he'd lost his leg again. On Thursday, police responded to a 2 a.m. call from a garbage truck driver who heard someone shouting from his rear loader, according to Western Pennsylvania's WPXITV. When authorities arrived, they reportedly found a man searching through the trash in the back of the vehicle for his prosthetic leg. The unnamed man who was not injured had apparently fallen asleep in a dumpster that was emptied into the back of the garbage truck. Cops said that they allowed the man to look for his missing prosthetic leg for half an hour before he was taken to the hospital to be examined. (laughs) (laughs) Officers reportedly plan to continue searching for the man's artificial limb, but they have not found it as of the time of this story. I bet they didn't look too hard. (laughs) I imagine you're a cop, and they're like, look, we need you to dig through this trash truck to find this dude's limb you're probably like okay boss i'm sure they got right on it they like <laughs> kick a few pieces of trash around and they're like no it's not in here boss <laughs> yeah no it's not in here at all but yeah let's make a gofundme page for him <laughs> how much are prosthetic limbs i think they're pretty expensive uh, well anything medical in oh, the united yeah. states is right. going to be incredibly expensive Absolutely. it shouldn't be no should but be. I bet it is. Well, we won't do anything about that, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will say, all right. Okay, it is at this point in the podcast that John Long went on an <laughs> epic rant about health care. And it was beautiful. I didn't want to leave it out, but it did break the flow of the show. So I'm going to snip it and put it at the tail end of the show. If you yeah. want to hear John rant about this, yeah. stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Our next article is Florida man squirts urine at a woman walking her dog. He okay. says that he would do it again. Of course. So, <laughs> <laughs> a Florida man was arrested Saturday after allegedly using a squirt gun to shoot his urine at a woman walking her dog past his home in Gulfport, which is outside of Tampa. It was super soaker. <laughs> I wonder, 
I wonder how long it took him to fill up a water gun. I don't, Depending on the size of the water right. gun, it, it, or how long, how much he's had to drink. Well, that's you true. You put too. a six pack at me, I'll fill a super, <laughs> so, super soaker up. Seventy-one-year-old uh, Joel William Benjamin was taken into custody and charged with one count of misdemeanor battery for squirting a woman several times with a water gun that contained his own urine at around 9.30 p.m., the Tampa Bay Times reported. All right. Police said that Benjamin allegedly admitted to shooting his bodily fluids at the woman <laughs> and told officers that he'd do it again yeah. when asked. Of course. WFLA reported the Panayas County Sheriff's arrest report, which was posted online by the smoking gun, stated the incident did not cause bodily harm to the victim. Benjamin was booked into the county jail on a five hundred dollar bail, posted bond, and was released. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel like that's not the whole story. I would really nah, want to know. There's probably some backstory, like she's been letting his dog poop in his yard, or something. <laughs> yeah, you know. Or maybe he was mad because the dog was going in his yard, and he's like, "Well, I'm going to go on you." Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. But I'm not. I'm not as surprised I used to be. I can't. Well, I need the assistance of a water gun in order to spray my bodily fluids at this lady. <laughs> my pressure's not what it used to be. My water pressure's down. Uh, well, we've all been get, been to games in Tiger Stadium down in Baton Rouge. You know, a little casual urine getting tossed on you is no big deal, okay? All right, yeah. It's just normal for SEC fans. So, yeah. But probably not a good idea to – to fire up the old water gun at your neighbor. Well, no, because then you get arrested and you go exactly, to jail. Right. So, but hey, he what says do, it was worth it though. So you, you put it in a balloon, hide on the back side of your roof, throw it at them over there, and they know <laughs> have no idea where it'll come from. Okay, that's all you got to do. All right, just, <laughs> okay. just throw it out there for everybody. <laughs> Two things I know a lot about: Medicare. And how to get piss on somebody. <laughs> All right. That's two, my two areas of expertise. All right. Well, you want to do community news? Yeah. Let's do community news right. right now. We want to thank our sponsor, the world famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, for their support. Check them out at CajunCurl.com. You can order the spice and their Cajun Curl cutter for potatoes right there on CajunCurl.com. Created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana, it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef, pork, potatoes. Had some on my potatoes before I came up here tonight. Nice. And anything else you can think of putting it on. Maybe even a prosthetic leg. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Just see how it goes. Their spiral potato cutter is absolutely ama uh, amazing. It's easy to use. It's easy to clean. And it will allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. So let's say you and your buddies done a little bath salts, you know, you had a friends <laughs> over to have a little party. You whip out your homemade potato chips, sprinkle with that Cajun Curl Spice on it. It's going to blow everybody away. That'll keep them from eating faces. So to, well, all our, to all our bath salt listeners out there, get you some Cajun Girl. Get you the chip cutter. Get your party going right. Um, on the website, CajunCurl.com, you can uh, order your Bayou Blended Spice and the chip cutter too. And you can also find recipes there that are really great. They're pretty, some pretty amazing recipes. You can also locate your nearest retailer or order your own. Now here locally... It's available at Vowels on Skyland Boulevard, Piggly Wiggly in Northport, South's Finest Meats, and at Mark's Mart. And if your grocer, wherever you're located in the world, doesn't carry it, harass the grocer until they start stocking it. That's all we ask of you to do. You're unless doing him that, a favor. Unless that grocer's my father, and leave him alone. <laughs> you respectfully speak to him and address him as Mr. Long, okay? All their products are made in the USA, and they're all natural. They're low salt. They have a little kick to them, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Check them out on CajunCurl.com and order your spice there and use the promo code EOP10, that's the number 10, to get a 10% discount. Because we ask that you use the spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. There we go. All right. Well, community news is chock full this week because our community is growing more active, and we thank y'all for that. We love that. We love the interaction. Yeah, I mean, we've got all kind of stuff going on. 
So we've had a, a lot of like reviews, a lot of messages on Facebook here lately. Well, we're, we're each going to take a couple of uh, Facebook comments. Yeah. This one comes from Heather Jason Woodmancy. Her middle name is Jason? That's, it is. All right. That's awesome. And I think this is a comment on a post. Yeah. She also but I think, gave us a review. <laughs> but I think, yeah, she gave us a review, too. Yeah, it said two of the funniest guys ever or something Yeah, like which that. is an excellent review. Oh, yeah. But yeah. she really put some thought and some uh some right. heart into her Facebook comment. Okay. And so I wanted to read that. Yes. It says here, flat earth oddity. So I'm a regular on the fringe radio network and I come across something I thought was a new flat earth podcast. So oh. I give it a try. About 20 minutes into the podcast, I have to pull my truck off the road because I was laughing harder than I have laughed in my life. Listening to these two guys talk about odd news in the funniest way possible, I paused it long enough to catch my breath and share what I was listening with a couple of friends who would appreciate farting in Dollar General and okay. some threats with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> so it's you remember that story. Saturday for me. <laughs> right. In a world full of misery and gloom, you guys are a breath of fresh air. I had to go back and listen to all of it from day one. Apologies for that wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> audio in the early wow. days. <laughs> yeah, That's, you've done something right there. I look forward every week to more. You guys lift my spirit, and I really appreciate the time you take and the effort. Keep it up. Right. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank or you Jason. so much. Or I mean, <laughs> maybe it's like a couple account. I've seen some of those. Yeah. Oh so yeah. I've maybe. Seen, me too. Me too. But yeah. Uh, you know, thank you for the kind words. Yes, thank you so much. That's that really it means a lot. That's what we're in this business for. I mean, and getting rich. But other than that, <laughs> it's to just well, make people laugh. I don't think the rich part is going to happen. But you know, you got to <laughs> see it and believe it. I don't know. It sounds like a name Joel it and Osteen. Claim it. Yeah, name it and claim it. Yeah, that's what I knew. There was a Joel Osteen sermon in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's all we really want to do is just make people laugh and make each other laugh mm -hmm. and, and just have fun during a tornado. So, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so the next one that I was trying to do before you got to Heather, <laughs> thank you, Heather, or, or Jason, or both of you. They may have wrote it together. I don't Maybe. know how couples' Facebook accounts work. Do they both hold the phone at the same time and work on it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but thank you so much, and I'm glad you found us through the Fringe Radio Network. They've been really great for us. And they have. Brought us millions of listeners, and uh, <laughs> we've enjoyed being a part of them. So let's move on to Mark here. Mark sent us a message eight hours ago. Oh, wow. So this is like hot off the presses. Yes. Mark said, hey, guys, just wanted to say I really enjoy the podcast. I like getting the information in a hilarious format. I have to tell you, I just started listening to your podcast yesterday, and I've listened to a few of them already. I was told you gave a shout out to letter carriers on your podcast, so I gave it a listen to hear that. Uh, I'm a letter carrier myself and appreciated the shout out and the information about our food drive. Now, I'm going to pause right here and mention again the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive that yes. our letter carriers are doing across the nation on May 11th. Gather your canned goods up. Once again, don't get the crappy stuff that you've had in the back of your pantry for six years and give it to somebody. Get the good stuff, you know? Yes. And put it out by your mailbox. They'll pick it up. It'll help feed people who are less fortunate than you and I are. And we can all help make a difference with the help of our letter carriers who have a really great job and a great opportunity because they're at everyone's house to do it. So Don't wait on the government to feed the poor right. yes, because right. it's not going to happen. We've seen what happens when they take <laughs> over health care. Okay. <laughs> Let's just fix that, people. All right. So do that. If you're listening to the show, you have to do it. It's a requirement of being a listener to the show, unless you're like Sadie in England or our listeners in New Zealand or whatever. It'll be a little more difficult for you. <laughs> Just take them down to your local food pantry or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, it says, also, I have to note that I know Keith. Now, Keith is the original postman who got in touch with me. Yeah. A little mad because I ran down the postal, <laughs> postal department. He was ready to throw hands. That's right. It says, <laughs> I know Keith from the Taylor, Michigan post office, and I am scared of him, too. So oh, wow. We already got that in common, <laughs> me and Mark. Uh, so, so you're in good company. Keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to going through many more of your podcasts. Sincerely, Mark the Mailman. So, oh, Mark the Mailman. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing what you do. 
and uh, listen to the show to tell everyone else that you know really every single person in your life about <laughs> yes. us and that they because you to love listen. them and you right. want them to be happy and we want to help people who are less fortunate so if they listen to us it's another chance that they will hear yeah. that we're doing it and they'll be like those guys are doing it I want to do it too because all the cool kids are doing it and peer pressure <laughs> sometimes really works well so. peer pressure works period sometimes but now, well yeah you can use it for evil get your friends to take bath salts right. yeah. or you can try to use it for good right. to try to get people to help feed the needy. Right. We're yeah. trying to use peer pressure for good. Here. Yes. Right. Yeah. So help everybody May 11th stamp out hunger, put your food out there so you can help do something um, worthwhile. You know, every day we live our lives. We all want to make a difference and very few of us make a difference every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, a sales manager for a furniture company. I don't affect people's lives every day. Um, so this is a chance for you to actually do that. And that's uh, that's what we want you to do. That's all Absolutely. we need you to do. So May 11th, it's a Saturday. Wake up early. Get your canned goods out there. Let your letter carrier pick them up. Take them back. We'll feed some people who need some help. All right? We've got a big problem with people having not enough food in the United States. Crazy, considering... <laughs> How Considering how much we, we throw away. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> but just my kids alone throwing away food. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, I can't help it. You can't make it through a whole corn dog, okay? <laughs> whatever. Uh, it, yeah. So we just need to help people out. That's what we're called to do. And even if you aren't a believer like Tiny and I are, you know, you're, you're still a decent person. Yeah. Let's, let's help somebody out. Nobody's saying you're not decent if you're not a believer. All right. So. We love getting Facebook messages. <laughs> Keep them coming. But we also got a voicemail this week. And we're going to play that right now, if I can get my phone to cooperate. Keep the voicemails coming, too. Yes, keep the voicemails coming. I think Clev, I think she uh, she, she started up, something. Yeah, she so. opened up the floodgates <laughs> she for did. us. Thank you. Here we go. Hey, uh, Tanya and John, this is Francisco Ruiz. I had a question for you guys. So I heard about this uh, 1854 mystery in Alabama, happened in Selma, apparently. And or Orion or Orion, I don't know if he's starstruck or something. Uh, Williamson, he was crossing this field at his farm and picked up his stick and he just vanished. He disappeared. People were watching him and he's just gone. Like there's apparently on the ground, all the, the grass is all like uh, withered and stuff. And he just, he's gone. So I want you to tell me, since you guys are like Alabama through and through, I'm sure you know every single thing that's ever happened in Alabama. What happened to Orianne Williamson? Thanks, guys. Love your show. Bye. Well, now, I do not know every single thing that's happened in Alabama, but fortunately, John Long does. I do. I do. <laughs> and he is familiar Alabama with the story. Alabama history is my, is my forte. Um, Did a guy vanish into thin air in well, Selma? I would say Francisco, he is one of the hosts of the Retro we Rewind. Yes. I can't say it. Shout retro out to Rewind. the Retro Rewind podcast. Yes, really great podcast. We, we've been, we've on been on it once. I was on once, and then for some reason they only invited <laughs> Tiny back. I don't know what's up with that, but whatever. Uh, so... Uh, so I actually have been in Selma this week. I, I go to Selma quite often. We have a location there. Um, so I did a little digging, did a little investigation. So Orion Williamson, this was in 1854, was sitting on his porch with his wife and his kid. He's looking out over his pasture. He's got some horses out there. Decides he wants to move the horses in the shade. He's getting hot. It's Alabama, you know. He's walking out through his field, like ankle-deep grass, picks up a stick, as he's walking, his neighbor, whose name was Armor, was riding by in his horse and buggy, his, and neighbor and son, saw him. He waved at him. Right after he waved, he just disappeared into thin air. Wow. No one could find him. They have people come from the town to help look for him. They actually dug a hole all the way down to bedrock. So, you know, if you're in Dang. Selma, that's probably... Eight, ten feet, I don't know. <laughs> you know, as far down as you can dig. Yeah. And uh and they couldn't find him anywhere. And then they say the next year that the that's when the grass patch died where Okay, so the next year the grass wouldn't come right. back at yeah. that spot. Right. Huh. Now the leading theory on this is that it, it was the Selma Triangle. <laughs> right. Yes. It'd disappear if you go to Selma. Especially when George Wallace was a governor. But that's a whole other thing. Um, the leading 
theory among Selmanites, <laughs> yes. I guess is what they're called, uh, is that this is all just a big hoax. Okay. And it was just a story. You know, it's 1854, easy for a rumor <laughs> to get spread around, right? Right. Um, they had fake news in right. 1854. Yes. Because I'm just saying, we live in Alabama. If something like this would have happened, it would be a tourist attraction right now to go see <laughs> the spot. You know? Yeah. We have a face in a courthouse window, which is 100% fake, by the way. <laughs> Uh, if you ask me, that's my opinion. 100% fake that in Carrollton, Alabama, I drive through Carrollton a lot too. I drive all over the state and, uh, and people come and see it, you know, and supposedly this dude's face keeps coming back in the window, even when they change the window pane. But if you're a town of like 1700 people, you sure want to keep people coming there for any reason. And maybe having a fake face up in the window <laughs> is one of the best things you could do. But anyways, um, that's the leading theory on it. Now, back in the day, they had all this, like, he got sucked into the universal ether. You know, there's newspaper articles about it and everything. But nobody really knows what happened. Mm -hmm. um, it was written about. Um, in fact, there are a few other disappearances around the same time that's been written about, too, all, you know, kind of in the southeast. So nobody really knows. Uh, and, but I'm leaning towards it's fake. You know, mm -hmm. that's just kind of my thinking. But yeah. I, I mean, he ain't Enoch or anything, right? I was about to say, I'm a big fan of Occam and his razor. Yeah. So it's probably just a, a fun story that people told of, of maybe folklore. And right. It's not as true as, or you would think. maybe something like that, maybe something kind of, maybe true events is, is inspired something like that. Yeah. Or maybe his wife was tired of him and got rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Maybe her and the neighbor had a little something going on. They're like, we're going to tell everybody he just disappeared, <laughs> yeah. right? They threw him down the Alabama River. So I mean, that could have happened, too. Definitely could it's, have happened. It's definitely more likely than he just vanished into the Selma right. Triangle. Yes. But I tell you what, it uh, it is an interesting story. Very much I so. would actually... If I can get some time, which I have none of. Sure. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up. We'll do a little more research. <laughs> but I would like to find out if this guy has any uh, kin that are still yeah. alive today that maybe heard the story or heard their grandma or yeah. grandpa talking about it. I don't know. I don't so, know. I would say Selma is a pretty interesting place. If, if you ever get a chance to go to Selma, there's a lot of history in that town. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Battle of Selma during the Civil War was there. Of course, all the civil rights stuff. This, it was ground cool zero town. for the civil rights yeah. movement. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was huge. Um, a lot of amazing churches there, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would say I'll just give it a quick tourist plug for Selma. Go check it out. And if you're listening to this and you live in Selma and you've heard this story, yeah. call us right in. Give us the skinny because we yeah. would like to know. Right. Yeah, definitely would like to know for and sure. Because the people I talk to, which are just the people I work with, are all like, yeah, that sounds like a bunch of BS to me. So <laughs> right. <laughs> that's kind of where I lean, too. I will say I don't think it was aliens. Because mm. if aliens came to abduct somebody, I don't think they would abduct them out of Selma, Alabama. Well, Selma used to be a booming a booming town. You know, it's one yeah, of the but, oldest towns in Alabama, by the way. But globally... I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff that's happened in Alabama. So <laughs> yeah. We do have the 33rd parallel runs through here. There's all kind of... That, that saying, basically runs through Malville, by the way, if you, you saying, didn't know. You saying it's on a ley line? I'm just saying. Malville's on it. All right? Yeah. If people don't know, Malville is like a huge... It was a Native American community in the Mississippian era, and they have huge mounds that they built, you know? And nobody yeah. knows what happened to them either. Right. All yeah. those people vanished they into just, the Malville triangle. Right. Yes. They <laughs> they just vanished too. The place I'm camping out there in a couple weekends, by the way. But uh they I mean the place is miles big. They yeah. had a whole wall around the whole city. So I mean it's, right. it was an amazing little piece of society that left. So but they found a lot of cool artifacts out there too. Right. Got a story about that, but I can't tell it on the air. So <laughs> They were a big fan of rattlesnakes. They oh, yeah. had yeah. pictures of them in all that's their right. pottery and yes. yeah, really, really snake neat place. disc and all that. Yeah. 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 A lot of cool stuff in Alabama, by the way. Just like throw <laughs> that out there if you're out there. I know we get a lot of joking on the internet and some of it we bring upon ourselves, but not as bad as you think. There's a lot of cool stuff in Alabama. We got beaches, we got mountains, we got prehistoric civilizations that you can go visit. It's pretty cool. So yeah. Just come on down. And you could vanish into thin air. Oh, yeah. So Definitely. You might could. I've been praying for it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the good Lord's not ready for me yet. 
<laughs> All right. I still got work to do. Well. You have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us, no matter where you get us, whether you get us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, we're on them all. Everywhere. If you would like to write into the show, and you would like to tell us about how your great-great-grandpappy vanished into thin air, yeah. or maybe if you know how to fix the nation's health care problem. That be, that's the ones that I'm really interested in. <laughs> that's more interesting to me than the dude who vanished. <laughs> you can send those to earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to tweet at us, we are at underscore Earth Oddities. That's right. And you know what? Jump on our Instagram. Oh, Follow our Instagram. It's been popping over on Instagram. No, John I've has... I've actually like, he dedicated has myself to worked it. really hard That's to right. steal a bunch of memes That's off true. the internet. No, everything and he's stolen. posting them every day. I'll slap our logo on it, though, just like <laughs> it was ours. You, know? you can check that out, underscore Earth Oddity on Instagram. That's right. And hey... We've got a phone number. We do. People really are calling They're it all calling the time. All the time. Now. You can get it at 662-493-2059. We hope everybody has an excellent week. Earth Oddity for the French Radio Network signing off. Bye. <laughs> this has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening. do anything about that by the way <laughs> right <laughs> i will say all right and i was talking with john about this my friend john today i've said for a long time i think health care for everyone is a really good thing mm-hmm. and i don't want to get on too much of a soapbox right here. i've said that i think we should have health care for everyone everyone should have affordable health care in the united states i didn't really mean it i don't think you know like i didn't understand well our foster daughter has to be on Medicaid. Mm-hmm. That's the rules. She's a ward of the state, basically, and staying with us. Right. The hoops you have to jump through if you're on Medicaid to just get seen by a physician are unreal. <laughs> I mean, it is unreal. And I've taken it for granted my whole life because I've had insurance my whole life. I get sick, I go to the doctor. You right. Know? Well, there's only like one doctor in this whole city that she can go see because no one else will accept Medicaid patients Mm -hmm. because whatever, I'm sure government reimbursement and all, you know, whatever. I'm sure I'm sure getting reimbursed from the government is a very smooth, efficient process. Yes. You know, so I just want to say I'm on board. I'm like fully on board now. Any of my conservative friends, I will fight you about it. (laughs) But we need to figure out how to fix this system today, like right now, because Hey, I know it's all fun to say, well, go get a job and do her thing. But I'm talking about an 11-year-old girl right here who needs medical attention. And we had to wait a week for her to get to the doctor Mm -hmm. because of all this mess. It's ridiculous. Well, I agree it needs to be fixed. I don't think anybody would argue with that. The question is is how we do that, and that's what nobody can agree on. Just give me a few days. I'll have a (laughs) whole plan worked out. All right? All right, John. I'm going to give you a homework assignment. You're going to go home. I've already got to figure it out. You're going to have a good long weekend. I've already got to figure it out. Next week's community news segment, you're going to lay out the John Long plan for National I already figured it out just now. All right? (laughs) I figured it out just now. Okay. Let's knock off a few fighter jets from the order <laughs> thing. All right. All right. Let's just knock off a couple. We ain't going to knock off a lot. Maybe seven. All right. So, you know, that's going to be a bit of money there we can keep. Okay. Let's do that. And, uh, and let's just put it towards paying for broke people to get the health care they need. All yeah, right. Yeah. You know, that's what we need to do. All right. <laughs> also, we give churches a little more freedom to operate clinics and uh, hospitals like it used to be, too, and let them do it as a charitable. Uh, yeah, event, you know, and maybe give them some protection. Yeah, to where you sign a wa- waiver, right? Yeah, and yes, you, you know, obviously, just, if look, you mess up really bad, you should be able to go after somebody. But some things, like you know, hey, the, the yeah, maybe I'll we'll throw some tort reform in there too. All right, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just now, I'm just spitballing. But well, again, we're going to work this out this next week. Let's work it out. Okay? And next week, we're going to come back and we're going to. Fix Earth, America's Earth problems. Oddity <laughs> fixes health care. And yeah. then what if we're like on the campaign trail? Like people call us on as experts and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. That'd be really great for the show. I may really do. I was going to say, now, of course, the episode after that is going to be titled, you know, America doesn't listen to Earth Oddity. That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> but, but at least we put look, a solution yeah. out there. Look, if you're out there listening, all right, we have a pretty big audience, all right? <laughs> if you're out there listening and you have any way to fix this problem, just let me know. Like, I'll help you out. I'll do whatever. But yeah. there's no reason an innocent kid should have to wait that long to get the medical does the medical help she needs. I agree. You know? I agree with that. I think we can all agree with yeah, that. Right. Uh, everyone, people of all political stripes should be able to agree. Right. That, and we need to fix it. <laughs> Orphans right. should have health care. Yeah. And I'm willing to screw up my insurance a little bit to help somebody else out. I don't know if other people are, but I'm willing to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I got to screw up my insurance to help it out, which I should say my wife's insurance because she's my sugar mom and she pays for my insurance. <laughs> I don't have any insurance on my own. I've never written a check to an insurance company in my entire life, like health insurance company. Then, you know, I'm, I don't know, man. We just need to do something about it. And I'm yeah. sorry I got off on a tangent about that, but man. <laughs> man, uh, you talk about You want to get somebody on a tangent? I want to get my wife in here. <laughs> Uh, because she I, had next a, week, next she, week she dealt with most of it, trying to get appointments and figure out where we could see. Oh, maybe we could take her to the doc in the box. Oh no, no, they don't take Medicaid patients. You know, you can't go see a doc in the box. Nope. You can go sit in an uh, ER for eight hours, and everybody's like, "Why is our ER always packed?" You know, well, because people can't get to a normal doctor yeah. when they have a sprained ankle. You know, yeah. or whatever it may be, right. So, anyways. <laughs> Not to right. mention the ER is just a terrible place. Because, you know, it's made for emergencies, but they also have to accept everyone yeah. who comes in. So that's what and people, some people have that's to do. The only way, that's the only way that's they That's the only care. option they have. Yeah. Right. Either they are they don't have the the proper insurance to go to a regular doctor, they don't have any insurance at all, or they're on Medicaid, and no one will see them. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, for whatever reason. Anyways, just need to fix it. All right, let's just fix it, okay? I mean, I, that's, that's the type of person I am. Let's just fix it. Like, why is it a problem? This should not be a problem. Why is this so hard? If we're supposed to be the greatest country in the world, then let's just fix it, you know? Like, we should be able to fix this. Well, Bernie Sanders, I will say this. Okay, if yeah. we, <laughs> right. If we, hey, hey, I'm coming closer and closer to voting for him because of this issue. Let's fix it. If we sell off two or three of our jets... It's not a bad start. Yeah. I will admit. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> those things are expensive. Yes. I mean, maybe knock a fighter carrier out of it, you know, like an aircraft carrier. I mean, that's water. that's a well that we can't continue to come back to. Yeah. But no, that's, I, know. Yeah. I agree. I mean, we can just trim the budget a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. I mean, look how big our defense budget is. And I know it employs a lot of people. I support the troops, all right? <laughs> I'm not a bigger. only thing I support more than the troops is a postman, okay? I love our letter carriers, <laughs> all right? But I'm saying. Can we not just shrink it a little bit and say, like, hey, kids, go get fixed? And, oh, you know, yeah. somebody's going to email about all kids and all this crap. But my kid can't get on that. My foster daughter cannot get on that. Okay? Right. She has to be on what the government says she has to be on. And I'm not saying the government needs to take care of everything or everybody. I'm just saying we need to fix it. Okay? Yeah. Somebody fix this problem. Well, you can edit all of this out, by the way. <laughs> Well, I'm, I mean, I'm pissed off about it, to be honest. It makes me really mad to think about it. I kind of want to keep talking about it because this is it, this is it, interesting. It makes me mad to think about it. And I'm not, you know, I don't think the government should solve everybody's problems or anything. I just think we need to fix this problem, yeah. you know? And, hey, I get it. A Joe Blow who don't want to work a job and all that, he can't. he's able-bodied <laughs> and can't afford it. All right, man, he sucks, all right? Let's all admit that. He sucks. But my my... Precious little foster daughter should not suffer because he sucks. You know? Because she can't work. Right. Yeah. There's child labor laws that exactly. prevent that. Right. I'm already trying to sign her up for a job. Maybe we should reform those. That's right. <laughs> Put her to work. She can call Put mine. Her Put her to work so she can get insurance. All of my kids. I need them to bring some income into this house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, man. I just don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, this made me really mad. And it's frustrating. And I understand more now than I did beforehand. Right. Where I was basically just saying, well, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, but I'm going to go to my doctor regardless, you know. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm on the other side of the spectrum, and not even fully on the other side of the spectrum, just caring for someone who is. You're like, this is why Bernie Sanders is so popular. (laughs) Yeah, right. You're like, yeah, exactly. Like, you know. And this is why he's popular. And it ain't about getting everything for free or anything. It's about, I want to go see care a doctor. Of the city. Yes, right. about taking yeah. care of the city. I want to go see a doctor. And if you're sitting here on Medicaid and this guy's like, I'm going to fix this system and you'll be able to go to any doctor you want or whatever, you're like, fuck yeah, vote for him. You know, why would you not? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. It ain't, you're like, man, I've been waiting in the emergency room for, you know, six days because I'm down in my back. Yeah. And there's no doctor that will see me and no chiropractor that will see me or anything. Right. You know, and I mean, anyways, all right, I, I'm done. I'm done. It just sucks. It sucks bad, and we need to do something about it. If we love other people like we say we do, and we care about people like we do in this country, most charitable country in the entire world, the United States, we need to fix this problem. So okay. somebody smarter than me get on this and get it fixed. Okay? <laughs> well, John, hey, this is your homework assignment. you got to come back next week okay. with something. I'm going to read it. Okay. All right. I'll and I'll probably trip. I'll, I'll, this is great. This is good stuff. Don't get me fired up about something. <laughs> but. I almost said a few cuss words. <laughs> well, thank you for not. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, we are. No, this good. is the house of God. Yeah, I know. That would have been real bad. Especially coming up on Easter like we are. That would have been real bad. <laughs> That's how mad it makes you, you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna probably move this to the end of the show. Okay, so. all right. You just put up like, hey, <laughs> listen here in a little while to hear John get mad about something that he knows absolutely nothing. About. I'm probably gonna break in. I'm gonna break in and be like, okay, at this point, John went on an epic rant <laughs> and it was awesome, but it kind of broke the flow of the show, so I didn't cut it out. But right. it's at the end of the show, so. <laughs> and I, I, I fully admit, I fully admit. That the government is part of the problem, okay? I oh, know think? that they are, right? Really? You yes. think the government is part of the yes. problem? So, like, of course, it's part of the problem. But let's fix it. You yeah. know, like why can we not fix it? You know? <laughs> well, because why is it such a hard challenge? Well, because the libertarian in me is saying because it's the government, dude. Right? Yeah. That's why. <laughs> right. But who is going to care for this young girl? If it's not the government, John Long, I would love to pay for it, but they won't allow us to say anything or put anything on there because she's not on our insurance. And if we sign anything, we're liable to pay for it. So I, I could have to pay millions of dollars for right. medical care, you know? Yep. So there needs to be some, there needs to be something done about it. We need right? to I'll, I'm about ready to fight somebody about it. <laughs> right? Who are you going to fight? Anybody. I'll <laughs> fight the president. You know, let's fix it. Of a congressman, whoever, let's fix it. Yeah. I'm just kidding the Secret Service. I don't want to hurt the president. <laughs> All right. Before they come and visit me, I get put on the other side of the wall. <laughs> I was yeah. about, we can't, so we can't afford to take care of kids, but we can afford to put a wall? <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Hey, I mean, I'm saying, I understand the wall, the whole argument for it, but all right. No. It's not the best idea. It's not the worst idea, no. but... We need to take care of kids. Let's prioritize. Let's take, let's take care of orphans. Yeah. Let's prioritize. Let's take, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever. I don't know enough about it to even talk about it. I feel like I would uh, be more passionate if I lived on a, on a in a border state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would probably, you would have a different perspective. Hey, the show's over while you're still listening. <laughs>